choice of an apple or raspberry and custard pie for just four dollars. Bad baby. That was much more of a decisive spanking <laughs> in game number three I than don't it think was. You can say spanking. Of course you can. Okay. Also, is it bad baby or bad Barbie? The like, like cash massa. How about that? Like, you know what I mean? I have no idea. You have you no mean. idea. I have no God, idea you're what so you mean. Old. I, I am. Look, I'm very old. <laughs> But Doctor Phil, you know, as you like, catch me outside. How about, how about that? that? Do you how know you, how I know who that is? Because Simon, because Swiffers. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What's it called? Status in-game message. No, uh, that game where he runs around and farms stuff. Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley's character is called Bad Barbie, <laughs> yeah. and I'm is like, what really? is that? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know Doctor Phil because of the memes. I know Doctor Phil because I used to go home and watch him after school. <laughs> uh, speaking of school, Dale will certainly got it. Nice. Great. Thank you very much. Nice. That is. Thank you. Top tier. Uh, but order, po- order, way more decisive. Yeah, Pulse like hit it in the end game call, right? Because like, this was just a very different game. Uh, both games have been like early lead ends up actually losing the game, mm-hmm. uh, which is a bit of a rough one. But like from the get go, it's like Carthus gangs bot. They get get bot side ahead. Carthus somehow, and like we were having the conversation. I'm like, how does Spooks get every kill? Mm. And Jake's sitting there just like, no, that's just that's how Carthus comms works. And I'm like, no, but he's got. Every, Every single kill. kill. Yeah. And then, like, that happens with, like, Requiem onto a 70% HP Akali and get back, like, or, or by Panther, yeah. Well, it is a snowball effect, right? This is what mm-hmm. we are saying about game one. He's playing Jarvan, he gets the three early kills. Mm-hmm. He buys himself a stone plate with it. Yeah, Cinder like, Hulk, yeah. Cinder Hulk stone plate. Mm-hmm. Like, that was his build. Yeah. Like, you're not going to snowball a game like that. You might be a very good frontline with mm. a build like that. But then if you go the next level and you have Karthus and you get a 10-stack Dark Seal mm. and, like, a nullifying, uh, not, a, an Oblivion or plus Orc boost, yeah. then you do carry the game, right? Yeah. So it, that, that's the de- definition of snowball. I knew that w- game was over. As soon as League of Legends gave me a fire dragon. Come on. Uh, Come on. Can we just buy a fire (laughs) dragon first, people? Um, But that was the thing was, is that this was one of those games where I looked at Direwolves and apart from the 2v2 bottom lanes that I felt like they got baited into taking, as you do when you play a lane counter, that's why actually sometimes we move away from lane counters because you feel like you, if you're not 20 CS up, if you're not like, if you're not hitting turret, if you're not like shutting this Braum down, it's like he's going to be so much more useful than me. It's like, okay, where's our jungler? Doing his like Raptor camp. Where's theirs? Oh, he's top side of that, but he's Carthus. Like, mm. oh, let's take the 2v2. Oh, we're dead. Mm. Like that happens all the time with lane counters. So apart from those 2v2 bottom mm-hmm. lanes, I feel like Direwolves played a relatively clean game. Yeah. They rotated around the map and they were able to take dragons, uh, sorry, turrets even against Baron again. They looked for a couple of plays on Tally and they were like nearly successful in those plays. They caught out Jake twice. They burn his flash the first time. They kill him the second time. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of really good plays that Direwolves made this game. The problem was it was just an 800 AP Carthus. Yeah, they're doing the fundamentals, the entire series, like very well, Mm -hmm. which is why they always, when order ahead, like find something back. They've been very good at punishing, but in a game where like the lead is incredibly big on something like a Carthus, it's 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 hard to 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 get that back. Yeah, but ultimately at the end of the day, Direwolves were outplayed by order, uh, much like you were outplayed by right, a, a dumpling. dumpling. Yeah. Uh, so earlier on, uh, as we're watching, I'm getting this out of here. Um, uh, earlier on, <laughs> as we're uh, watching the game upstairs, Bryce takes the lead back. Big bite of a dumpling can, just out of the hand. I also just say it was juices himself. It was a desi- these are he, to rem- he, he starts to <laughs> I've strip never seen these before in the room and lay and lay it out, uh, lay the jumper out of the floor. Turns to Jake and I and goes, "I'm really hoping that uh, that it dries before the end of the game." We're like, "Buddy, what is about the problem? You oiled yourself. That's gonna stain." Yeah, that like well, I, well, you can see it's right here. It's actually it's because it's on this. Yeah, and I've been I've been told I wasn't allowed a wardrobe change, so I'm actually just a prisoner. Um, but I think we're still dry. Oh, we're still dry. That is and all, disgusting. And the worst thing is, it's so juicy. It's not even Riot Games' shirt. I brought this one in <laughs> That's from home. That's terrible. No, the so. real worst thing is, is when I brought the dumplings into the room, Bryce said, oh, something, who just farted? So yeah. the, the real worst thing is, if I could just fart it, yeah, you got yourself a fart shirt, yeah. man. You got a fart jumper. Uh, it's no good. Bryce, <laughs> e-fart Paul. Uh, uh, and also, I was going to say, you're that guy that, mm. like, something happens and Nick is... He's just like, he's already there without the fumble. Like, you're just... It's, it was... The camera, are you a double tap to open your camera? I do it for the people here. You, s- you said that to me. You said in, like, an earthquake or something. Yeah, car crash. Nick's like... Yeah. Nick's the guy from Nightcrawler moving the body to get a better picture to sell to the news station. I just very clearly want to say, That's you like... juicing yourself with a cold dumpling is no earthquake, my friend. Mm. Uh, I would... 
probably film the earthquake. <laughs> you falling down the hole. All right, uh, before we get on to the final game, uh, an- another qu- Maybe game, final a game. quick one. You, sp- you referenced earlier how old I am. I wanted to take a moment oh. to celebrate the olds in the OPL. Those, because we've come to Gauntlet, we're in- heading into the second last game. I really hope this split. is not a segment about me, because otherwise I'm, I'm in a good mood again. <laughs> but you can take me down very, very quickly. I'm older than you, my friend. It's okay. Uh, we're in the second last week of the split. Uh, it's time to celebrate the people that got us here. And I'm not talking about order. I'm not talking about direwolves. I'm not talking about bombers or chiefs or mammoth. I'm talking about the parents of the OPL <laughs> players. So we'll have a very quick game here. This one is called, Who Did They Make? And so what I've got here are pictures of OPL pro player parents. O-P-P-P-P's. Uh, I'm going to show them to you yeah. and you need to guess who they made. So let's okay. get the first one up, please. Who did she make? Destiny. Holy shit! How Destiny. did you get that? It's the eyes. It is the eyes. It's the eyes. It's the eyes right there. Look at that. Upstairs has just gone wild. Oh, yeah. They went away. nuts. That That's came insane. through two levels. <laughs> that's uh, insane. What? Sega? How insane. did you know that? That's incredible. I said the eyes. Yeah, no, but that's like not what normal people You're like. Yeah. They don't human look. At, they don't look at a human being always... they've never seen before and go. It's you the eyes. You Destiny. don't need to take a photo because your memory is just freakish. <laughs> yeah, I guess you diverted all the brain power away from eating into just like yeah, my, eye my, recognition. My wrinkly yeah. genius brain is just. Uh, yeah, you do not have a smooth brain, my friend. So you are a wrinkly brain. <laughs> yes, the second you. OPPP, please. Who did they make? God, that's look at those eyes. Nothing. Um, <laughs> Dangerous statement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out that Pulse said that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say... Katsuri. I was going to no. say Katsuri as well. No. Like no. Dunkra? Mm. Uh, no. His okay. parents were very supportive. Claire! No. Oh, God. Oh, I I'm thought out. I had it. It's Ayla. 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 Ayla's parents. Ah. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Because I, w- I went like mum's jawline. So yep. I went like Katsuri. Yep. No. Nah, like, that I can... Bill does not look like. He fell far from the tree, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, please. Oh, peep, peep, peep. Oh, that's oh, like a uh, Yeah, I know this one. Do you? Yeah. Do you really? Does Zach? Were you at the wedding? No. Well, problem is, I've met one of them. I've oh, met right. actually both of them in the photo. So okay. I'm going to abstain. No, yeah, you, that means you can go. Does it? Yeah, absolutely. It's Parbu. No, because Rusty reckons is he it? has it. Yeah, it's Parbu. 100% Parbu. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. met oh. their parents. We yeah, had parents. to put it in black and white because Parbu's dad's hair is actually purple and it would have given it away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number four, please. Oh. Who shit. did he make? Bill Laurie? <laughs> 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 uh, this are they, one, this a, one's a little left of fit. Are they on a starting roster of an OPL team? <laughs> I no, I, no right? Not. I know who it is. I think I know. They make you, Nick? No, they did not. No, 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 no. no. My dad has, I would say, 98% less hair. <laughs> is it... Can I guess? <laughs> uh, yeah, it. You may. Is it Andrew? It is not. Oh. It is, of course. Producer Matt. Oh. oh. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, um, the jacket's puppers. <laughs> He's uh, a good looking God. dude. Producer Matt's dad, by the way, famous actor. Oh, really? Yeah, what? he was an Australian soap star on a show what? called The Young Doctors. I know. What? Matt only revealed this to me an hour ago. Trust me. I'm going to pay you out for the rest of the... That's an amazing fact. The hot dog photo is something he did not want me to show. Well, from now <laughs> on, we should uh, just do a segment called Young Doctors where we just watch the best of Matt's dad's oh. acting and then we can oh. rate it. Absolutely. Give the people actually what they want. And I'm what? sure that's out of copyright right now because it's in black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Matt's like 60. So, the, like, that show, <laughs> that would have been, uh, That show, I, I think, came on directly after that guy who said, Welcome to television. Uh, okay. Uh, next one. Next OPPP, please. Oh, I know. You do? How do yeah. you know, How do you know I this? Know. You, I know. Can I, I just. You spend way too much time hanging out with the parents Harry, of the OPL yeah. players. I'm and just going to say that. Yeah. yeah, it's Rogue. It is Rogue. Yeah. Look at that. They've got the same steely stare. I've also met Rogue's mom. Yeah, I yeah, have as well. Yeah, so you should know that, that one. <laughs> I just, I think I have that thing where if I see someone's face... Facial blindness. Yeah. I attribute emotions to people. What emotions do you attribute to me? Yeah, what I, uh, a lot of caring. I feel like we... When the camera's off, it's I true. feel like we actually... like Because a lot of the times I come in here... 
let's not get too deep. No. We both have ch- kids. Yeah. Like, and, and we talk about it a lot. So there's a lot of love that goes on between us. With Bryce, it is absolutely frustration. <laughs> yeah. You associate frustration with me. Yeah. Totally. Is it your frustration or my frustration? It's my, no, you never get frustrated. <laughs> yeah, good. I, I get say, frustrated. This, is, this sounds like a you problem, <laughs> Be, not a me it, problem. It is, because when Bryce and I talk a lot, Bryce, Bryce is one of those people that if I have an argument with Bryce, and Bryce thinks he's right, he won't actually argue till he mm-hmm, proves that mm-hmm, he's right. Mm-hmm. And he just disengages while saying, I'm right, so I don't need to do this. That's true. Which That's I find true. infuriating. No, I just say, here's my point. If you disagree, then like I think we've reached an impasse and we're done. Yes. It's not infuriating. I, yeah, I'm not. Saying. I'm already getting angry just hearing you <laughs> say that because now he's disagreeing with how I argue with him. All right, now you've made Jake angry. He was my Care Bear before, so I'm not happy with any of this. Let's get into game number four. Feeling good, feeling spicy, feeling the Mac is champ select. That's true. It did create frustration almost immediately. Never so upset like... the Care Bear. <laughs> just dangerous. He explodes. You'd know. I would. We worked with him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, game four. Uh, yeah, again, like, I just don't know which way these games are going to go, right? Like, I said it before the break, but I feel like momentum is a huge thing for Order, and, like, given the way that, like, the ramp-up was from Game 2 to Game Mm 3, that would imply to me that Order are going to come into this one, and this could just be it. Um, but Die Wars, we just don't know, you know? Like, Die Wars are still a super solid team. Yeah, the rest of the series obviously still unwritten, but what we do have, the facts are that Order have the momentum, and the Die Wolves need to change. Mm-hmm. We need to look at this champion select with that in mind. And they've already made the first recommendation that we had the second the game <laughs> ended. <laughs> ban the Karthus. Which was ban the Karthus away. Yep. It never should see the light of day. And now we have to look at how they follow that up with the rest of the bands. It's a Kiana, it's a Gangplank primarily from them. Those are the two things that have given them the most trouble. Morgana is there, but I don't think they're too concerned with the Morgana anymore. Especially being on red side when they have a counter pick available. So I would expect the Gangplank. Yeah. See where they choose to go, because remember that Zaya was yeah. also banned last time they were on red side, because they don't want to give that to Dreamer Jake. Here's my question for you, actually, as is the GP ban here from Dire Wolves. How flexible do you think the Dire Wolves are as a roster right now? Because, like, maybe the roster was the wrong word. As, like, in terms of draft, because obviously they have Corporal and Total Rep. But yeah. if I compare them to Order, and I'm just like, wow, pretty much every one of these players has, like, a pretty deep champion pool. They can play pretty much anything. There's a lot of different comps that can come out of them, like, very different play styles as well. How flexible do you think Die Wolves are, especially in a best of five situation? I actually think they're pretty fre- uh, flexible in general. Uh, from what we've seen of them through an entire split, you know, they do have relatively deep champion pools. Uh, it's not something that would be you know, too crazy to see them whip anything out. Katsuri is anywhere from an Ezreal to a Sivir to a Lucian type of player. Bayer Panther can play Scions, he can play Akalis, right? They can flex all of the champions that are flex picks in their first three. So, I mean, overall, I actually think that they're fine. I think the difference that you probably want to highlight there is that Order aren't just flexible, they're unique. Right? Like, they can bring out a champion that no other team plays. Yeah, you know, Swiffer exactly. has Aurelion Soul, he has Twisted Fate, he's got very deep pockets, and every person on that team can do something similar. And I think that's the, the key difference. I think Dial was a flexible, mm-hmm. but I think Order are just wild. Unique, yeah. For sure. Order are just going to straight up lock in that level's duo bottom lane. Um, and this is, I believe, the first time that uh, that has been open for them. Looking at my notes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, Zai has been pretty much just consistently banned in this series. So, uh, yeah, love this duo for them. Zai Wolves picking up once again. Turtle getting his hands on Okay. Braun, um, and it will be Ezreal coming through along with that uh, Renekton. Now, Ezreal did receive a couple of nerfs on patch 916. Yeah, the, the biggest one being that is an extra six seconds of cooldown on your E at level one. Which is huge. Which, yes, it scales down to being the same as the 915 Ezreal, but you have to max at second, right? Yeah. And then AP got nerfed. So, yep. the way that I see it is Ezreal is now back to the stock standard AD build, but that also still gives you a window, like extra time, to make a rotation of skills to try and catch that Ezreal yeah, out. Right. So, as I see it, Braum Ezreal, very strong lane. And I think the Ezreal has been picked almost just for the sake of the Braum, uh, to just have a strong 2v2. But yeah, not ideal anymore, is the Ezreal. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, Azir ban and Lissandra ban coming in here. Uh, Order also ban- uh, picking up the Vladimir actually in this first uh, rotation. So, uh, still thinking it could go top lane or mid lane. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would actually say the Tally is most likely to yeah. receive it, though it isn't the best laning matchup. Uh, Renekton pretty comfortable up against the Vladimir, especially if your jungler, which I was going to say could be an Elise, uh, has been banned. But there are still options to try and camp that lane. 
It would be very refreshing to see Raze on a non Sejuani champion uh, in this game to have more onus on himself. That's what I'm looking for here for Direwolves with their last pick, uh, as I currently do still expect that to be a mid lane to Leah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they're being picked up. Uh, Elise and Corky bans on the order. Looking towards their last two picks right here. Currently hovering the Tristana, but yeah, most likely going to swap Ooh, up that to could be good. LeBlanc. Yeah, which, you could even yeah. do like Zinzal LeBlanc. Kha'Zix is a, obviously sure. another good option for it. This is a really strong composition from order. It makes a lot of sense. The only risk is what can be picked now into the Kha'Zix that works. You don't necessarily want the Olaf again. There's a risk of being outscaled if they continue to do that. Lee Sim, maybe Raze goes back to his best sure. champion. He's tried and true. Up against a match point. Now would be the time to do it. Bring it all the way down to the wire. It will Talia be Talia jungle. jungle. Yeah, Akali will go into that mid lane. Okay, so upon seeing the Kha'Zix, they've decided that Raze will be the one playing this Talia. You know, it has been primarily a get back champion, but they want the matchup in mid lane with the Akali. Now note that LeBlanc, a couple of patches ago, has also received some touch-ups in that your chains now reveal invisible targets. Mm -hmm. And on the same patch, Akali's W went from being obscured to invisible. Yep. So this may be a matchup where it could be very heavily swinging. And with a Talia and a Karsix as the junglers, there's a lot of swinging possible. Odd Summoner's Rift right now. Yeah, I mean, I can see this order comp getting out of control, right? And you always have the Vladimir as late game insurance regardless. Um, that being said, you know, Dire Wolves bringing out the Akali once again. I feel like Get Back will be the X Factor um, in this lineup as he was definitely in these previous games. You can really tell what a team wants to do by the amount of Ignites as well. Sure, yeah. Order, have an Ignite on Jake and on Swiffer. No heal there in the bottom lane of Order, but Totoro has a heal. And Get Back's gone for the Teleport. So I see this as like a, you've got a 1-3-1 one, one set up potentially there for the side of Dire Wolves. Very hard to deal with a Talia, Ezreal, and a Braum if they manage to set themselves up in that position. But that's an item and a half away from now. And that's about an item and a half worth of time where Zaya Rakan could be very aggressive on you in the bottom lane. And Kha'Zix, if he gets any control of a side of the river, makes life difficult. Absolutely. Match point, two to one for order right here. They have the momentum coming up that last game. Only looks better as this series has gone on. And still with that extra game buffer, even if they do lose this. And it always feels like order have more in the tank, no matter how far you push them. But Die Wolves, you know, coming in here as the highest seed. See if they can make it happen as we get onto the rift. Two to one. See if order can close out or whether Die Wolves can make the comeback. Horrors will lead the way for Totoro. It looks like once again we'll just have ourselves another fan start here. Nothing crazy to be seen besides the first game's level one, really. Late invades with Brahms, always a possibility. I think that's the only thing that Order will have to look out for. They've seen the ward go down here, and there's no sweeper actually there from the side of Diawol. So in terms of late late invades, I would say very unlikely. You know, Braum being strong doesn't actually compensate for what is a Zaya Rakan on your opponent's side. Kha'Zix as well with the isolation. Mm -hmm. The Ray's actually going to do something a little bit different here. Bio may check the bush. Yeah, it's possible. Minions have spawned. Bit of dancing to start of the game. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a Q right here. And Pebbles oh. just barely out of range. Scrapes his backside, doesn't actually find what he's after. Yeah. Now they're going to go to the blue buff. Time Spooks. Very much aware it's just going to go towards his red. They're going to trade. Maybe they vertical jungle, by which I mean handshake. Handshake. There we go. And just swap sides of the jungle completely. Frost Impulse. Rude defining the casting <laughs> vocabulary. I just think that's just confusing for viewers, if I'm being honest. Who's so going to start off this red buff? There's one top side obviously being taken here by the Dire Wolves. Raptor Boy is very easy to take as a Kha'Zix as well, because you have the Talisman and your W. Make sure they're all proc, so yeah. you actually don't really lose health as a Kha'Zix doing Raptors, which is just really nice. Yeah, two sources of healing uh, on one camp is, uh, is very nice yeah, The indeed. old Kha'Zix hates Awful. that camp. That is the worst, the worst camp in the game, but now very comfortable with it. And you can see his health bar very healthy over to the blue buff now. Mm -hmm. If not a gank in bottom lane, as that ward will catch. Might might have spotted him. Yeah. Yep, Ping goes down. Has been spotted. Uh, still also good against single target camps as well. We'll pick this one up pretty quickly. Raze goes towards his side. And uh, likewise, today starting off with the Talisman. And yeah, bottom lane. 
We finally get to see Dream and Jake on uh, one of the strongest bottom The infamous Zyra Khan. I would say so say. for order. Yeah. yeah. Very dangerous when they get their hands on both of those champions. It's the kind of thing that has beaten the Chiefs in the OPL in week 10. Yep. That's the risk they have taken here, Diables. It's the gambit that they have thrown. They've said the Braum Ezreal can deal with it fine. Mm -hmm. And anytime I feel like we say that, and as someone that's been on a team and has played against Order plenty of times and have said that, it just never seems to pan out the way you'd expect. Yeah, it's that little bit of X Factor. You have that uh, ability to play out of matchup. This wave's real rough for get back. He's actually pushing towards the yeah, this turret. Is and uh, yeah. Kha'Zix is in a position where if he wanted to, it could maybe look towards the gank in mid lane. It's actually very frustrating. It's one of those early games where you like almost want to go back and watch the entire like first, second, third wave go in and actually see like what happened then. Top, oh. top lane. Goes for the flick, and that's going to be straight up first wow. blood. That was a lot of damage very quickly. That just felt really simple from the side of Dials, and that's terrifying for that to be so simple. Jake tanks the turret shot. It's just an even trade in the end, but wow, that top lane kill. Tally had W. Tally yep. had flash available, mm -hmm. and he just couldn't react and dies. Yeah, that's almost so shocking. It's just like, when you see that connect, uh, connect you expect of Lanami to be able to tank it if he'd not already flashed or sanguined. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Spook's looking to make a return play. Instant teleport response from Dire Wolves. So this will diffuse and buy a Panther, burns the teleport. But it doesn't matter, he's still got the assist on top side. So we'll now recall back to base. They do get the flash out of Katsuri, the heal out of Totoro, and the teleport from Bio Panther. So that little look in on the bottom lane dive is actually really important and really good for order as the state of the map is concerned. The death that happens to Tally in the top lane ends up just becoming a TP trade. But also now a lot of time has to be spent from Biopanther away from that wave, walking back to lane after resetting from bottom. So it's a big win for the Vladimir when it doesn't look like a crazy amount. Yeah, I guess his recall as well as the wave is crashing. It is on kind oh, of wave that's so that upsetting. Oh, just, yeah. That's all right. Biopanther will still most likely try and push this. The wave's a little bit too big to hold as a freeze. Oh, I, I, oh. With it. Oh, dodges out the knockup there on the arcane shift, but as we said, level one arcane shift on a very low, uh, very long cooldown now. So, wouldn't have that for uh, a while. And it also swings, you know, matchups like this where like grand entrance will be up before um, arcane shift by like a long shot. So you open up new windows in this lane. Uh, but we're still gonna have a recall out from Jake first though. I always feel like Dream looks down on all of us. And then you get Dream's forehead camera. He's just staring down. Oh at yeah, everyone. right. I assume he just like kind of sits forwards. He has to do that, yeah. Yeah, sitting position is something that you don't think about too often, but everybody sits differently. Um, and I notice that like sometimes we'll be on like MPL, right? And then someone's chair is like super low or like very high. I'm a very short person, so like I always have to bring my chair up, but some people have their chairs super, super low down. Top lane by a Panther is going to do a lot of damage actually on Tally right here. Yeah, he's in a very good spot still, Bio. You know, the, the wave not crashing under his turret, not losing a whole lot. Vladimir doesn't push too fast, granted. So he's in a comfy spot. He'll hit six well and truly first. And he's also got a Talia shadowing him in the top lane. So he's free to push as fast as he would like. And at level six, the dive in top gets even easier. Note that Tally still has flash. Bio still has flash himself, I will say. So if they wanted to force this engage and try and one-hit Tally, they can. You'd want to clear those melees, however, so that Talia can free hit. There they go. Flash roof was Predator, and it's just the same thing again. So well played by the Direwolves top lane. Yeah, no hesitation, both flashing, and it's almost just clockwork for them. You know, as I'm saying, maybe you want to kill the melee minion so that Talia gets the free hit. They do it before I can even finish my sentence. Yep. That's how far committed they were to the play, and a second death to this Vladimir in top lane, and that one was incredibly significant. You can see deep breaths there from Talia as he walks back to lane as well. That's a 20 CSD. That's a two level difference as well. Things looking really rough for the top laner of order. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, this is the second time where, you know, Flash and Sanguine Pool were available, but it just happened too quickly. And yeah, as you said, 26 farm down is not a small deal at seven minutes into the game. Raze is in the bottom side on this Talia, so farm this one up. Gets knocked up once again. Toto was going to block that damage, but. Setting up for uh, what wanted to be maybe a look at bottom lane here. Spooks will turn towards the dragon instead. It looks like he has to kick this one off, actually. Yeah, it's an infernal dragon that he's looking to solo out himself. Now, in saying that, a Kha'Zix should be very well equipped to do this dragon in terms of damage. His sustain is not incredibly high. You would like the Rakan to come over, give a bit of a shield and heal onto Spooks, because 
He would have had to double smite this camp to sustain his way through it. And now it seems like he should just be able to get that one with the single smite usage, as he didn't have the second one available. Yeah, yeah so it does need help from the bottom lane. But still, first and final, going over to order is uh, very nice. Uh, two kills on the opposite side. Both going over to raise and get back. He had to get some nice harass as he goes back to the turret. That was a crucial ethereal change there from Swiffer. And uh, now pretty much bring the mid laner back to even. He's only really gone for one back. I imagine that uh, mid lane sitting on a good amount of gold. So picked up the Sork Boots and Mercury Treads on the opposite side here from uh, the Akali. Yeah, Boots really valuable for both of these mid laners, especially in this matchup. Merc Treads really important to get out of the chains as fast as possible because then it actually just allows him yep. to deal the damage. For a LeBlanc, it's all about having that mobility, hitting the spells. And Sorcerer's Shoes, just a brilliant champ uh, pick for LeBlanc in general. The concern is still top lane. No matter how you look at this game right now, top lane is just the present thought for the side of order. What do we do to deal with this? You know, like, mm -hmm. if Biopanther uses his Goldie, which is a thousand right now, to get an Executioner's Calling, the Vladimir just dies 1v1 consistently. The wave needs to be constantly under his turret, or it's just over for him in the 1v1. And it's not that simple, right? Yeah. Anytime it bounces back to you, you have to bring the Kha'Zix up. And anytime you bring the Kha'Zix up, which exactly is in this moment, right? Blue buff has been given. Dials know about it, they'll take the 2v2. So it feels like really there is no winning moment for the side of order as they are looking. Tani opens up onto Biopampa but raises here once again with the counter gank. Goes into the sanguine pool, Biopampa ticking down slowly but turns around, gets the down to lose Rufus Predator and raise Wolf and him off. Tani backing off towards the turret will flash away this time. It will be a one for one. It's the one for one trade and fortunately for the side of order, none of the kills that happen to go to raise were resulting in money boots for Bio Panther. So they're able to get that one for one trade. Someone has used, however, flashes, ultimates, all burn. And just a one for one is the end result. You still take that because that doesn't actually help top lane at all. That's just a kill for the jungler. Yeah, 3 0 0. It feels like the roles have definitely been reversed in this one. Raise now the recipients of all these early kills. Water still putting a lot of harass down this bottom lane, just generally having that pressure and that prio about. Three ways ahead. Yeah, and that turret will eventually drop down there. Ten minutes in, three plates gone. Yep. And the 15 CSD. You are seeing the Zyra Khan of Jake and Dream add up to be a pretty big deal. But in saying that, Die Wolves have drafted themselves not exactly a winning bot lane 2v2. Has a lot of threat. But there's bitch me. Well, hang on. They're just straight going. Yeah, yeah. throw out both ultimates. It will be a kill into Totoro. It looks like he stepped out there for the minion wave. Yeah, he seemed to step up very far. That was. Surprising. The most surprising thing of that entire trade is how he was in that position. Yep. I was just about to say that Katsuri and Totoro's job is to weather the storm. You know, a, a 12 minute tower was still something that you'd be comfortable with in the end. Yeah. Now there's the risk of it being even faster as they get a kill with it. I was going to say, up until that point, it was going pretty well as well for that bottom lane from Dire Wolves. That being said, oh, second change, don't connect. Boost goes in, but now kind of gank from Raze. He's pretty much hard committed to this one. Swiffer will go back in, auto attack, and hard commits as well for the kill. There'll be two more kills over to the Dire Wolves. They really decided that they've committed too much for that kill to not get it. And so they do use every single thing that they have, including the kitchen Everything. sink, to get yeah. that kill. A raise, right place, right time. Now a 4-0-1 Talia running around. Super scary for the entire map now. Yeah, absolutely. Talia is uh, very big, but bottom lane tower is down to a single plate, and uh, it's probably a, a fraction of HP. So all this bottom lane by itself has also just kind of evened the tables on that one. So still a relatively equal game across the board, you would have to say, with the Inferno over to order. Second one going to be Cloud once again. So. Of course, if all to take a dragon, the chances for it to be Cloud is about 80%. Charlie's just getting beaten up. Raze is also just making sure that Kha'Zix stays away from that area. Do not hurt him or his son ever again. But this bot lane turret just gone. We've found ourselves in a position where you want to say it's a flipped map in terms of win conditions. You've got a top laner versus an AD carry. But it's actually the jungler of Raze. And there is a world where sooner rather than later, he gets to influence that AD carry. Right now, that AD carry wants nothing to do with the map. Dream pushing the bot lane inner. Now, Harold's pretty much gone right here. And uh, this will be a much easier collect here for the Dire Wars. They gave the last game. Game. Oh, mid lane though, getting a pick on to get back. He's now in the shroud. Don't know exactly where he's gone. Throws out the five point strike and uh, simply walks away.
Lucky to be alive is the takeaway there for Get Back. Has the teleport, however, so we'll be able to deal with the mid wave. And during all of that time, the Herald was secured by Bio Panther and got the 100 gold. And the buff itself was given to Bio Panther as the top laner. So it really feels like to me, this is a result of Raze saying that you can use the Herald, you can get the gold lead for yourself, you've got a minute to get plates if you find the opportunity. Yep. But I'm not going to be there for the rest of this game. You get yourself a lead with this. And he goes bot side to Dragon. Yeah, and this will be uh, Cloud over the Direwolves. Mid lane getting sieged in by uh, Dream, though, will get under the plate for himself. So one minute left until these plates fall, but Dream is very much uh, getting the value when he can. That was just an extra 320 gold he just picked up in mid lane. Uh, Dream's huge. The difference between eight carries is monumental. Yeah, almost 2,000 gold. Yeah, this is uh, very much individual players just uh, being the, the chosen champion for the team. Well, that's the thing, right? And I think Order have found this really good point in the meta where every person has a champion. Swiffer has Kiana, Spooks has Karthus, Tally has Gangplank, and bot lane is Zaya Rakan. And you only get three bands. Yep. So they're always going to have the other one, and that is the win condition for Order. And I think that's the perfect position they've truly found themselves in. That's why it really feels like, you know, Order peaked at the correct time again. You know, they've come into the gauntlet, and everyone's like, oh, it's the gauntlet buff. But really, it feels like the meta constantly comes back to them at the correct moment. Yep. To enable that even more. Yeah, definitely compounds. Uh, Harold's going to be placed topside as the plates have just fallen. Five Panther's going to escort this one in. Actually, no one in topside to really respond. Only now is Spooks and Swiffer turning up to this top lane, so... That top lane tower is dead to right, as you can see. Bio Panther will take it down. And now bot lanes found themselves in a one versus one. It's Akali and Vladimir. Yeah. We have a LeBlanc against the Renekton. I think a little bit harder yeah. to kill would be the LeBlanc. Also has gone for the Luden Seiko, so wave clear is actually pretty abundantly there. A single W would trim the back wave. So perhaps this is what the Doctor ordered for order in terms of lane assignments. And again, it feels like Direwolves are all too happy to let them have those lane assignments. They're not forcing any swaps back and forth to get the lanes that they're after. Which, I mean, realistically, you would rather have it as the Vladimir vs. Renekton. But you can see Akali is actually walking bot lane. Yeah, I mean, just on that back row there from Direwolves, that was Executioner's Calling being picked up for the Renekton, also the Hextech Gunblade from Akali, so... Really big spikes in those solo lanes. That's exactly my point here, right? Like if you go for an Executioner's Calling, you probably just want to play against the Vladimir. Exactly. Like, at any opportunity that you can. But they are so content with their lane assignments, they haven't even tried to swap it. Double the stort into chains there. Still a difficult dive they wanted to make it happen. Totoro. Takes a lot of damage into the mid lane. Likewise, Katsuri, but it's, uh, again, he'll burn here by the duo lane. Stepping up into Fissure. Line the Q as well. Joke makes it back to Zaya. Still looking to harass down the AD carry. Just constantly hunting, constantly looking. As Dream once again on his little emote spam game. You can tell that he's a confident player to say the least when he's posted up in mid lane. Totoro with nothing to provide for this tower is going to back away. And that does mean that a lot more damage will be put down here. So if it lets him know, lets him know. He's got his nose. Good job, me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is, you know, the primary school teacher coming out on you. <laughs> so if a lens his nose is a statement that, why am I here? <laughs> it's fine. No one's listening, Rusty. It's just you and me in this room. Anyways, um, mid lane. Getting to push this one out now. Uh, out of mid lane turret is still up here from order. Um, they're not looking to push in. Rightly so, though. Spooks was looking to flank top side in top river. Yeah, place down a ward. Immediately sees the Kha'Zix. Puts this one out. Uh, looking towards a raise right now. Has that um, Relanomicon completed jungle item and boots. Goes back to base. Surely should have uh, something to spend yet. Yeah, picks up two control wards and an amp tome. So is now looking towards probably Zonia's off of the back of that stopwatch. And there's only a thousand gold difference. And uh, so much of it's just going to oh, be yeah. through the jungle difference right now in terms yeah. of gold. Super even game. Hey, it's amazing. Swift has got himself a 30 odd CS lead, but he's now against a Renekton. So I guess it's a 20 CS lead. And Tally's been able to stem the bleeding for such a significant amount of time that he's got a full item for himself. And he's actually not too uncomfortable in his 1v1 against the Akali. 
his health hardly ever drops to super low amounts. Like, Order have genuinely put themselves in a position to win this game from just the little details. Yeah, those are the most important things, though. Yeah, Siege being set up here by uh, Dire Wolves. A lot of control was just being uh, thrown in the face of a team who just yeah. instantly takes them away. So Ray's, things to uh, consider for Direwolves, besides Ray's being very much in a uh, deep position, is that the Ezreal, while he is very far behind, has one of the cheapest two-item spikes in the game. He's now gone for the Iceborne Gauntlet, which makes sense, and the Mana Mune. When that becomes Muramana, incredibly cost-efficient two-item spike is Ezreal. Zarya is very fed, but you can only be so fed, right? And only have so much gold that you can get yourself on the map without having a ridiculous amount of kills, to the point where they've actually gone two-item spikes at the same time. So Katsuri is not in the worst position overall as the map state is concerned. Top lane should be very far ahead. And they're looking to engage. Doesn't hit the fissure, but Dream kind of forced into it. Big flank coming out from the Talia, and that will be the shutdown going into Katsuri. Both bot lanes just dead in an instant here. And Die Wolves, not look towards this mid lane. A lot of chunked help pass though, so probably out towards the Dragon. Now they've got the item spikes, they look towards the plays. Biopanther needs to show a little bit of respect, but Die Wolves, look at the vision they have on the red side jungle of order. They know exactly where their opponents could be, if anywhere. And so they're able to utilize that vision to make the play. Talia places the wall, Akali gets the rotation, and suddenly back into the driver's seat. Yeah, finally getting that goal lead over to their side now as well. That will be a second cloud over to the Diables and a third on its way as well. It's been a very cloudy day on the Rift. And Order looking towards top side. Once again, Spook's always just shadowing his mid laner. See where a lot of that gold has gone to. I mean, no surprise into the jungle for Talia. Bottom lane on the opposite side for Dream. So, yeah, really as you would suspect. Uh, Vladimir definitely is catching up though. Has basically kept that gold differential the same for the last 10 minutes now. It's amazing to me we're even at this point in the game, but that's just the way that it's gone. In what towards, sense? I mean, I just I find it crazy that Diablos couldn't snowball the, the top lane jungle 2v2 harder. That's sure. just how I see yeah. it. And I, you know, I spoke about lane assignments already. I think that is a, a big part of it. But Went for the Kindle gem before. The execution is calling. Didn't get the gold, so they got the jump on the 2v2s. Race is a little bit late to those plays. Keel used again in mid lane for Totoro. <laughs> but they are still in a good spot. You know, it's about picking your battles. And I think the Iowals are one of the best teams at picking them. But when Order choose to pick their battles, such as in mid lane, doesn't go well. Yep, they get themselves a pick for Viapam from responding along with Get Back. This could be a big cleanup here for the Direwolves. They get two themselves. Ray's also looking for his own flank. Forced out the flash from the LeBlanc. She moves back towards the mid lane now, but that was a two for one trade, and Direwolves should be able to finally crack open his outer mid lane turret. Swiss is waiting over the wall, but I don't really see this as uh, kills to be picked up here. Really important turret broken there from Diables, being able to get that one. They net themselves 3,000 gold now in advantage for themselves. And when you speak about the plays that they get to choose, this wasn't one of them, but the teleport is something that they can control. Vladimir cannot cancel a Renekton's teleport. And he gets in with a really good flash stun onto Swift, removes him from the play completely. And Dream and Jake used everything going forwards. So they were the two most vulnerable to the players. Get back, gets back. Yes, he does. Yeah, Dio is still the uh, better end of a lot of these fights. Still, the Vladimir is getting bigger. Jungle has picked up a Dusk Blade, bottom lane, moving towards that third item. Crit AD carry. Uh, yes, he is. I believe he must have died during that replay. But he's like about to come back up, so he died almost instantly into that replay. We've been told by producers he got LeBlanced. Yeah, that'll happen. It's uh, one of those things that LeBlanc <laughs> does to you as an AD yeah. carry. Just get ya. Especially when your only items were armor, and he has promptly purchased a null magic mantle. So. Uh, this is quite scary. Tally actually might just die here. Talia just rocketing into the bottom lane. Sanguine pull, lands the Tides of Blood, dodges out from the flick, but now chasing down. Biopamp is still here, called the Meek, and does manage to survive in that very prolonged chase. Yeah, it doesn't just survive, but almost gets trade kills in response. Raze was very low. And it's as simple as dodge the W and you survive. The seismic shove wasn't there. And so Raze has to back away and slink away, unfortunately, for him with a whole lot of missing health. 
Now Order have an opportunity to say, well, you've shown yourself bot lane. That was the play you chose to make. No one should be surprised that Raze is focusing via Panther's lane. This has been a tried and true method for Diawall since like week six of the OPL. Yep. But the opportunity is now there in response to make the play. Katsuri has the flash, as does Totoro. But do they have the health bars to survive? Swiffer uh, does manage to get the appeal, change the knockup as well. This should be a clean kill and pick into the mid lane once again. Gets onto Totoro. Very important by Pampa though. Oh. Again, I feel like it's just the same plays on repeat. Knockup on to the Renekton, but that's a lot of damage in from the True Shot Barrage. Does manage to take down the Croc, but here comes Get Back. Gets the first kill. Looking towards Spooks, he flashes away. Moves on to Swiffer. Distortion into Blast Cone. But Akali still on the chase here. Raze does not have the ult. Spooks waiting over the wall. Jake goes into his stopwatch. And Get Back follows all the way through. One versus three right here. He's rooted and just put down by the Vladimir. Yeah, Tally's able to get the flank just a little bit too far. Flick connects. They do get one trade. Swiffer's going to look for the second. Lands the chains, jumps away. Katsuri was here, trying to finish him off the Mystic shot. But Swiffer now looking to chase He's low hunting. health, low mana. It's just on cooldowns. Blascone is here to help close some distance. But Totoro back from base. Probably just going to back up. A single Q would have been enough to kill Katsuri until he actually took stock of the map and said, OK, that is a life still Ezreal on a minion wave. There's no chance I actually follow this one up with a kill. That was messy. There was a lot of individual moments, a lot of goods and a lot of bads that came out at the same time. The end result is no real loss or gain, except that they get an extra couple seconds on the map to place down some vision control is order. Yeah, that was uh, very, very messy indeed. Uh, but still, getting that fast kill onto uh, by Pemper was pretty key. I expect to Renekton actually survive for a little bit longer, but did manage to put him down before he became a big problem. The big problem right now is that oh, Dream has three items. That's the Infinity Edge done. And no matter how you paint it, Katsuri is going to get chunked. Dream will kill whoever tries to do that to him. It's going to be hard to execute for the Akali, but it is possible. Yeah, this constant harass coming in from Swift as well. It's starting to mount up. Once again, looking for that pick onto Totoro, but now Jake under attack. He jumps back towards Zaya. He's going to be okay. Swiffer, again, just looking for opportunities to get poke damage off onto Zaya, with making it hard for them to go for these big engages. Yeah. Vladimir also in pretty good shape now. Um, he's picked up oh, his Proto Belt. There is a full item of difference between our junglers as well. Spooks is walking around with an inventory looking bare. 3,000 gold difference between them as Raze is able to finish off his Zonia's Hourglass as well. Mm -hmm. And the thing to consider here, actually, that it is actually important, is that Ricard... Oh, hang on. A new Feather Storm coming through, but it's the kill onto Raze. Swiffer managed to get the Assassinate in the back line. Get back, comes out of stealth. Still in the middle of five people. Not a whole lot he can do. Totoro chunked and out of They're mana. Barra. Yeah, I mean, it's 25 minutes. They have the damage on the front line here. Bottom lane's chunked out, though. Swiffer is enough also with Sweeper Swiffer's here. Swiffer's just an absolute menace. They can't get to the Baron buff. Straight There's a little gatekeeper. block in the way, so they're just going to go for the mid lane in a turret. And they may not even get that in time. They should be able to with Demolish. But Swiffer's here just to say, you can't overstay your welcome, and pushes them away. Yeah, it might just be annoying enough can't to stick recall around and, yeah, stop the recalls. So they get the instant done down out from the roof of the Predator. That was uh, that was very nice. Stun chain coming in as well from the passive out from Totoro. So. But even then, Swift was just able to, while he does think away, as a Baron-empowered recall, and they get the ultimate out of the Renekton. That's still a win. It shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, big win. 26 minutes now, Baron buff in hands and order. They're very much ramping up now. You know, Diables did manage to wrestle back control, but it felt like a few good fights to the hands of Order and completely the opposite way around. Another Infernal about to spawn in three minutes to add maybe to uh, Order's single Infernal Arsenal, but this is looking like it could be the 3-1 here, Rusty. Certainly poised to be so. Order with a little bit of a snowball returning the gold advantage in their favor are very good with the leads with the champions that they have as well. The risk is the LeBlanc and the Kha'Zix. Hard to execute high reward champions, though, while the risk is there. Swiffer now 4-1-4. Four, and four, Definitely set up to just blast anybody that gets in a near radius of him. And Spooks will most likely always be hovering that LeBlanc. If the game plan plays out as they would like, no one can touch Swiffer. Only he can ruin the health of his opponents. And Zaya Rakan are just going to win. No matter what way you look at it. They will just win if you don't deal with them.
What I was going to say before, though, Paul, is that Talia is actually uniquely equipped to deal with Rakan because of the pebbles. Yeah. And is very fed. So there's a chance that Jake, as a byproduct of engaging, just dies. Yeah, those pebbles must be very annoying for a lot of people, though. Turtle just lost 50% of his HP out from a W and a W spam here from uh, Swiffer. This poke is just forcing Diawals back inch by inch. Katsuri just getting chunked down, you know, quarter That's of his it. HP at a time, and that will just be inhibitor. Um, Bio with nothing to say about it. He's stuck in bot yep. lane. He's dealing with a Vladimir. He can't even push in turrets, can't get anything on the map. And it really feels like, at this moment, 28 minutes into the game, ought to have Direwolf's number. Absolutely. I mean, like, you look at the Renekton, and this is not the same state as it was before. He's unable to, like, chase down the Vlad into his base. Like, he's ahead, but not to the point where he's able to get that solo kill reliably in the bottom lane. Um, now five members are actually finding themselves down here, looking for a pick potentially on the Biopanther. He's going to wait in this tri bush, but if Jake sees him and they get the CC chain down, you know, he will just die. So backs away, looking towards his allies. There's now a minute until this next Infernal Dragon, so this will be the next objective here. Yeah, significant amount of time until that dragon. There's enough time to poke your head around and see if you can get some picks. The Talia's coming down. They want a tally. Yeah, this time he does manage to dodge out with Sanguine Paul, gets some knock-up. Good Fissure coming in from Totoro, but he's just instantly detonated by Dream. Tiny buying some time, Biopanther into the back line, hits the Dominus. He's doing a lot of work, but it's the dual kill owed to Desire. She's huge right now, and Swiffer cleans up the backside. Katsuri's dead. That's a 5 for 0. They're teleporting the top lane as well, Pulse. He wants to try and end the game right now. You can see the screams from Order. Tally may not have enough to do it by himself. There's 15 seconds, but he's damn well going to try as the rest of order push in. At least the Nexus turrets to drop. Big comeback here. They're going over. They're going to end the game yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, it's either double Nexus turrets or just the game, and it looks like that will be the case. Turtle respawning now, but 15 seconds until Biopanther. I don't think Diawals have the time right now. 29 minutes he can't this one. Stop them. No, it's not going to happen. Order, look towards the Nexus. And Order have managed to do it. The lower seed takes down Direwolves. And Order have well and truly stopped their run in the gauntlet. Order and gauntlets is something that can only be fated. You'd never expect to see another 3-1. Direwolves push them to their absolute limits. But here we are again. A 3-1 victory for Order. And the Cinderella run is definitely a real thing that could happen for them. And if last gauntlet is anything to go by, Pulse. Three zeros and clear skies ahead mm -hmm. for order. No more cloud dragons to be seen. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things we were talking about during the game. You know, we kind of speculated on it. The fact that, like, is it the meta? Is it the timing? Is it them in Gauntlet? What is it? Maybe it's a combination of all of the above, you know? But still, you can't deny the fact that order literally, like, sneak into Gauntlet, like, final game up against Devon, managed to beat them down, take fifth place, then defeat Direwolves, who have been on a consistent rise for, mm -hmm. I would say, much longer than Order, to be honest. That's multiple weeks of play where Direwolves were getting better and better and better, and were consistently fourth place, looking towards third. But, I mean, Order still managed to do it, take them down, and now look towards Bombers. Yeah, I mean, and Bombers is the team that Order in the exactly. regular season yeah. have been able to 3-0. You know, that's the team that they should be most confident going up against. And the way I see this, right, is... The meta has come back for order for mm -hmm. certain. You know, every individual person on that team has a champion. And that just makes it impossible to draft against, right? We yeah, saw right. it. Karthus in the third game. Now you've got Zaya Rakan in the fourth game. And no matter what you seem to throw at this team when they're on those champions, mm -hmm. they're good, right? Like they'll be yeah. able to play well against you and get those wins. And to me, that's the difference maker right there is it is that gauntlet magic. It's the confidence that comes mm -hmm. with it. But when you consider all of these other tangibles that are real, that exist, it really makes order hard to deal with. Yeah, drafting just feels like whack-a-mole, to be honest. You know, you deal with one problem and another one just crops up. And uh, absolutely, it was the Carthus in uh, in game two, I want to say. Yeah, game three. You know, game three. Game three. Yeah, game two it was banned. But that's the best of five thing, mm -hmm. right? Like in best of ones, you can come in and say we're going to ban Gangplank, Kiana, Carthus. We're just going to beat Zaya Khan. Exactly. And then you do that, but then they bring out something new. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if we change sides of the rift, we change our bands. Nothing seems to work against this team because in a best of series, they have five different answers and that's all they need. Mm -hmm. And this is the power of the best of five, right? Like it will heavily benefit some teams. It will make other teams look different, maybe not like worse, but mm -hmm. it will heavily benefit teams who are good at adapting, have wider champion pools, are able to uh, emulate different strategies and, you know, start to analyze the team as time goes on, right? Like you always hear about 
um, adaptive teams versus teams who are better at refining, right? I think mm -hmm. those are the two types of teams when you look at meta, for Which example. Which is kind of order diables. Exactly, right? Um, but then when you come into the best of five, you get to see that in a microcosm. And yeah, absolutely, we saw this here for order. Yeah, very impressive stuff from order. The run, once again, continues. Weak yeah, right. I, you said it yourself. Like It's almost like fate, but it feels like it. Yeah, I mean, it genuinely mm -hmm. does. I don't know who stops order until we get to maybe Bombers, who mm -hmm. did it last split. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for now, that's enough for us. We'll be back tomorrow, but we are going to send it to Nick Boy with the player interviews. That is enough from them. Let's talk to some real heroes. Well done, gentlemen. Thank you. Day one down. How are you feeling? How are you feeling, Jimbo? <laughs> Take it away, <laughs> champ. Oh, I mean, I was feeling good before that last game. <laughs> God, <laughs> that was... Ooh. Oh, yeah, you were camped, eh? <laughs> I like. I didn't know how to help you. Kept getting one shot. Oh, what was the question? Oh no. How are we feeling? Yep. Oh yeah. Um, I feel. I feel good. Um, Sam's I got having a blinder. Huh? You having a blinder? Yeah. yeah. I mean, game two, the Carthus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was kind of weird because I got, I got real hyped after we won, the second game. Yep. And then I kind of like. I th it felt like, I got too hyped and it felt like a blood vessel broke in my vein yeah, yeah, yeah. and I thought I was gonna pass out. So then on the rest of the set, I was like real like just chill and zen. As in like forcing yourself. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You don't... No, Cause I was like, I just, I overwhelmed myself with my own emotions yeah. and then, yeah. So for the rest of the set, I was kind of just chill. And then like everyone just kind of took over. It was kind of like last week. Like I was just like chilling out, Jimmy, everyone was just calling me really well. Yeah. And so I like, I like being taken care of. Well, I'm really glad the interviewees we got is someone who is like hyper chill because he's worried he's going to die and someone who's ashamed of the last game he played. So mm -hmm. that's turning out really well. Uh, but is it happening again? Is that the plan? I mean, I guess. Like, why not? It's the same. It's the exact same as last time. We 3-1 the first game and then it was just smooth sailing from there. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think we're very confident playing in these types of games where there's mm. a lot of pressure mm. um everyone loves like the hype and like this is what we play for ultimately yep. and like i think our players specifically just seem to like when the energy levels are really high we seem to thrive mm -hmm. um so you know i think we're definitely a contender what i appreciate about order is that you guys understand drama that the idea that the order brand seems to be look like you're out and basically have thrown away the entire split. Yeah, yeah. And then somehow claw your way back in and yeah. then do that thing where you just get energized by that. Like, it's yeah, yeah. an underdog story, but somehow you keep resetting yourselves to become the underdog yeah. because of the understanding of drama. Yeah, I think OPL is 100% scripted. <laughs> yeah, like, of course. Uh, we're not going to get viewers unless we make a little bit of drama. So True. that's why we entered the start of the split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is all pre-recorded. We're yeah. at home right now. Yeah. So what's what's the next part of the script, James? I, I mean, I mean, as funny as it is, like we're on Team Order, but like we thrive in chaos, which like doesn't really make sense to me. Chaos, order, entropy, <laughs> a never-ending cycle. Is that a league quote? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it is next now. question. It's, it's an OPL no. league quote for sure. Well, gentlemen, oh, no, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. We may be seeing you guys back here on the couch tomorrow. Probably not you. Hopefully. We'll probably pick other order members. Uh, but until that day, get some sleep. Prepare yeah. for day number two. Mm -hmm. uh, the climb continues, and we'll be back after this short break. to pick their battles, such as in mid lane, doesn't go well. Yep, they get themselves a pick for Vian Pamper responding along with Get Back. This could be a big cleanup here for the Direwolves. They get two themselves. Ray's also looking for his own flank, forces out the flash from the LeBlanc. Very important by Pamper though. What? Again, I feel like it's just the same plays on repeat, knock up on to the Renekton, but that's a lot of damage in from the True Shot Barrage. Just managed to take down the Croc, but here comes Get Back, gets the first kill. Looking towards Boots, he flashes away. Moves on to Swiffer, Distortion into Blast Cone. But Akali still on the chase here. Ray's does not have the ult. Spooks winning over the wall. Jake goes into his stopwatch. And Get Back follows all the way through. One versus three right here. He's rooted and just put down by the Vladimir. Yeah, Tally's able to get the flank just a little bit too far. Flick connects. They do get one trade. Swiffer's going to look for the second. Yeah. yeah it's a significant amount of 
some time to kill that dragon. There's enough time to poke your head around and see if you can get some picks. The Talia's coming down. They wanted Tally. Yeah, this time he does manage to dodge out with Sanguine Paul, gets some knock-up good fissure coming in from Totoro, but he's just instantly detonated by Dream. Tiny buying some time, by Panther into the back line, hits the dominance, he's doing a lot of work, but it's the double kill owed to Desire, she's huge right now, and Swiffer cleans up the backside, Katsuri's dead, that's a 5 for 0! Panther, I don't think Diawals have the time right now, 29 minutes he can't this stop them. No, it's not gonna happen, Order, look towards the Nexus. And Order have managed to do it. The lower seed takes down Direwolf. And Order have well and truly stopped that run in the gauntlet. A little goes a long way at Macca's. Enjoy a delicious small cheeseburger meal with your choice of an apple or raspberry and custard pie for just four dollars. Well, there you have it. Order make it through to day number two, uh, ending the Direwolves. 2019 OPL split appearances season. Uh, but we should say, putting the Diawars have certainly put themselves in a good position uh, heading into next year. Yeah, I think on multiple fronts. Like, you talk about the rookies, we mentioned it every single week. Like, Katsuri coming out, get back, stepped it up massively this split. Uh, they brought over Rays and Totoro. Like, this is by no means nobody in the Diawars camp wanted to end here. But I think for... And I mean, like, the one member I haven't mentioned is Biopanther, like, individually. Mm -hmm. And I think he had, like, a very good series Blinder. as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, so, genuinely, this was... A good series from both fronts. Like, mm -hmm. we were saying after two games, like, this should be five games. Yep. Um, so it sucks for them, yes, but everyone, organization, individually, like, uh, can can stand tall after this one. Yeah, absolutely, and hold their head high because their preparation was obviously really, really good. They came out swinging in game one. I actually think they had a great game plan, banning away the champions, taking away the Zaya, putting Order in a really strange position in draft when Order normally has that front foot. Like, the longer the game went, you know, the more you felt like Diables were getting control, and that is something very tough to do mm -hmm. against a team-fighting veteran team. And then you got to look at, like, people like, you know, uh, Sharp and... Uh, Sorry, Curtis and Nathan, behind the scene, put a lot into this team. Mm. And I think it really shows through their fostering of young talent. And they're one of the orgs that are bringing up these young kids that Absolutely. are going to be like, you know, such hot property over the summer. And hopefully they stick together as a core because that's what you want to say. You want to say, you know, 19, 20 something, like young 20s, uh, playing really good League of Legends together and forming that next generation. And it has been unsuccessful so many times when you try and bring in new kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Diables really got it right this time around and their mm. Korean imports fitted in like very, very nicely. So nothing but like uh, respect for that, for what they've been able to do this year. Absolutely. And a lot of excitement for Order, obviously, uh, you know, looking like the beginnings of a repeat from the last split. But also I think that the, the messaging we kind of got from the boys on the couch was that uh, they were excited, but also ready for this. They felt like they went, yeah, if we get through day number one, then we kind of know what we're doing. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, Bombers are the next opponent. And uh, coming, they know into, what doing coming into this day was like, oh, wow, like, order 0-3 versus Direwolves, and then versus Bombers, it's 3-0. And, mm -hmm. and it is the teams like the Bombers, the Mammoths, the Chiefs, everybody above them, we're, we're actually picking them to potentially be favourites into this one. So I think even as order now progress up the gauntlet, like, the dream of last split, like, can they do it again? This is exactly how it started. Um, but last split, it was like, where is this coming for? Uh, coming from? Yep. Now it's sort of happened, and the guys above are like, oh, oh okay. God. It's coming yeah, for they us. They have drafts <laughs> yeah. for us yeah, this yeah, time, whereas yeah. last split, I guarantee they did it. Mm. Everyone had a mammoth draft for game number one that was above uh, mm. order mm. in the goal. No one had an order draft sitting there. It was like, how do yeah. we change our mammoth draft yeah. now? Yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, it's kind of strange, right? Because we were 3-0 versus Diables, and I really think stylistically it was a hard matchup. We keep memeing that Bombers are an easy matchup for us, but if you go back and watch the three games, we certainly have not beaten them in the same way three times. Mm. So maybe that's kind of just like a little bit of tongue-in-cheek banner. I know that these players like to play against each other, though. Because I know Bombers that, like, and, yeah, um, yeah, I know Ryoma loves to play against Swiffer. They were the original skin betters, right? You mm. can't play like Talia well, anymore. Like, yeah, it was the Tommy got Talia, stuck. It was the Sin yeah. Queen of Hearts Syndra. Yeah. They're all they're just off limits. Yeah, they're yeah. just off limits. Like yeah. so, like they used to say, if I win this game, you, you can't you can use, use that skin, skin anymore. Yeah. yeah, so they used to do that against Swiffer. I know uh, Tally really likes to play against uh, Mimic. Mimic. Yeah. I, I had Ju Song in my head for some reason, just because he really respects him and thinks he's like the best top laner in the league, right? So I think that. That's kind of why they egg each other on and kind mm -hmm. of rip each other going into these games. But I think it's going to be a blinder tomorrow. I really don't think that you can say order of the favorites, given how well. I mean, they just, bombers, they just perfect game chiefs in their last <laughs> yeah, game. Exactly right? much. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Tommy died once because he didn't stopwatch. Like otherwise, like I think they have the MVP 
in Ryoma, mm-hmm. and I, like they perfect game the top of the ladder in their last performance that we saw. Like you can't undersell this team. And we talk about the idea that Auto made the gauntlet run last split. Bombers won. There's a slightly different roster, mm. obviously, heading into this one, but Bombers ultimately took it out. So yeah, tomorrow should be an absolute banger. Let's take a look at the results for today. Uh, there's not many of them. It was a one-three to Order, uh, and tomorrow, as we've spoken about, heading into Bombers for a best of five. The winner for that game will take on Mammoth on Saturday in their own best of five, and the winner of that will head to MEO to take on the Chiefs. Melbourne Esports Open, of course, in Melbourne, featuring esports, and it's open to you to come along. So head to (laughs) melbourneesportsopen.com.au forward slash tickets to get yours. I believe there's still a few available, but it is selling very fast. It is going to be such a good weekend. Uh, There are so many esports tournaments there. So many obstacle courses. So many obstacle courses and a huge amount of League of Legends and TFT uh, all through the weekend and all across the show floor. So we'll all be there. We are looking forward to it and we hope to see you guys there too. That is it uh, for the OPL section but we do of course have the MPL coming up uh none of this the OPL or the MPL is possible without the work and the generosity of our lovely sponsors McDonald's the official partner of the OPL M-Wave the official retailer of the OPL and HyperX the official headset of the OPL and dumplings the official Accident. oily yeah. just shirt ruining Ruiner pieces of crap of the OPL, of the OPL. <laughs> If anyone Thank has you. any suggestions on how to get dumpling oil out of a very Hook nice me up. jumper, because it's an it the the pro- I could get it out of the shirt. I, the jumper it's a very soft fabric. You don't yeah. want to. I kind of feel like this is my fault, just to derail it for a little bit. Because you brought him upstairs. DJ Paulie B walks in today with this blue jacket and goes, "Should I wear the jacket or should I wear the <laughs> That's jumper?" True. And I said, "Lose the jacket. I really like that jumper." And now it's ruined. So I apologize, Bryce. That's true. And also, I helped you rip your jacket. Uh, so therefore, it was yeah, also you did unusual. Break my jacket. It's been a bad Bad day for Bryce's clothing is what I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, what is not a bad day is the MPL. It is coming up after a short break. So we will see you guys then.